service and power options does not include the fission subscription. Barry asks, have, have there been any recent updates to the sketch? The sketch, not really. That's, that's Kurt's free white paper uh, that introduces the methodology. There might have been some aesthetic changes that have made. Maybe some graphs were entered. Um, uh, I'm not sure how old your copy is, Barry, but uh, if you wanted to, I'll tell you what, Barry, why don't you send me an email after the presentation with your address? And I'll have a printed copy of the sketch, the most updated version, and a um, that Mary put user guide uh, set to you as well. I don't think there have been any major adjustments to the sketch itself, Barry, but there have been some updates over time, uh, different charts that are shown, different evaluations, discussion of uh, adjustments to income methods in the blueprint. Oh, I'm sorry, Barry. Yes, email to support at poweropt.com. Uh, support at poweropt.com. Just send me an email there with your address, and we'll take care of that. All right. Let's see. Got another question here. Oh, it's Hal again. Okay, Hal. Um, assuming a trade fits into my SEGA model, okay, would it be wise to consider a married put out 500 to 600 days easier to apply the income methods? Well, that's going to depend. That's a tough question. That depends on the individual stock and the movement of the stock itself. Would I be able to realize a potentially higher percentage return on my position if I bought a put that was only 500 or 600 days out of time and the stock moved up 10 to 15 percent shortly after I purchased it? Yes. Um, the put would show, wouldn't show as much decay yet, much time decay yet, and it would probably still wouldn't move you know, as fast with the stock itself. Um, whereas the one that's further out in time might have a little bit of lag time is how it moves with the position or the adjustments there as well. I think it depends on time frame, Hal. Um, you, you have the risk, uh, you follow, follow, Hal follows up with a risk of 5% or less. I don't think it matters, Hal, if it's 5% or 8% in that scenario. Comparing the put this 500 days to uh, 900 days, let's just say, out in time, um, I think you realize a higher return. Um, the availability of applying an income method depends on the stock moving up in price in the shorter term. Is it possible you'll have a lower price 500 to 600 days out of time? Absolutely. You'll pay less time value, so you'll have less risk to pay down. But if it doesn't, the risk with doing it only 500 days out is if the stock doesn't move in your desired expectation in the first uh, three months, let's say, or four months, you're going to start to see some decay, that's some more rapid time value decay in that shorter term put than the longer term put. I think on average from the last fishing trades I've seen is Kurt has been staying around um, the shorter time frame, 150 days for example. I find myself how typically going about 500 days out in time if I can, if it's available. I usually like to be at least 250 days out in time if possible. Um, a lot of the positions I've been looking at do have leaps, so the newer positions I've been opening in the last month or so, I've been focusing on the 2012 positions uh, for those dividend paying stocks. Uh, ben wanted to know what is the SEGA model? Ben, in the blueprint, the SEGA model is sort of the description and the guide of what you would need to do for each income method. For example, we were showing that fossil position that had moved up. I was comparing income method number one to say income method number four. Well, what's going to determine if I enter one or four? Well, that's going to be defined by what is referred to as the SEGA model in the blueprint for each income method. What are my con current conditions? It's uh, SEGA with a C. What are my current conditions in the market? What are my expectations of the stock going forward? What are my personal goals and what action am I going to look to take? So whenever I'm opening an RPM or I'm looking to apply an income method, I follow the rules of the SEGA model for that particular position. All right, Jim wanted to know, is the reason you don't use deep in the money calls or sell deep in the money calls because you don't participate in any upside movement in stock, whereas you do with the married put? That's exactly right, Jim. That's, uh, you know, we didn't get into the methodology and why we're doing it in this presentation. We'll be doing that tomorrow at 12 noon. We did it yesterday at 12 noon. This was more to showcase the tools. I started out seven years ago, well, I'm sorry, when I started out with Power Options seven years ago, 
Ernie was mainly trading covered calls, and, and that's what he taught me. And I was also over, you know, next uh, after a year or so, I was going into some uh, calendar call spreads as well. And some of the problem deep in the money covered calls can work in a neutral to bullish market. If you get assigned, you have a higher probability of getting assigned, make two, two and a half percent if the stock moves up. But the problem is if the stock moves up, if you're looking for more gain and the stock moves up 10 or 15 percent, well, you've capped your gain at 2 percent. And even with the deep in the money positions where you might have a 10 or 8 percent or maybe even a 15 percent downside protection, if there's a sudden gap of 30 percent, you're still looking at a 20 percent loss. This covered calls work as a sorting machine. If I'm making 2 or 2.5 two percent every time I'm right, but I'm still risking a large percentage if I'm wrong and there's a sudden gap down or an unexpected event, even with covered calls, even with deep in the money covered calls, I can be right 65, 70, 75, maybe even 80% of the time and still lose money. Okay, Jim, and a follow-up question. Um, I like to sell my puts as near to the stock price so I don't have to wait for much movement to sell calls. Anything wrong with that besides the higher risk? No, I'm assuming you meant you like to buy your puts as near to the stock price as at the money as possible, Jim. And you're, absolutely, you're, you're right on the money there. I mean, if you like to do that because you want a shorter time frame or you want to see less movement before you sell a call, make an adjustment, generate some income, the key is your risk threshold. Even though it's a higher risk, Jim, if you're comfortable with that, you're willing to risk that, that's okay. That's going to work out for your expectations. I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that my risk threshold was to look for married puts or use insurance where my risk is no greater than 7%. That's perfectly fine for me. That works for me. Um, may not work for everyone. Yesterday we had that brief discussion with Bill, who, as I mentioned a couple times, might, we might set up a special presentation with Kurt and Bill later on, where he's doing the radioactive trading techniques on more volatile um, biotech stocks. He lets his risk go high as 20%. It's not something I would personally do, but that matches his personal threshold, and he's able to get great gains on those sudden spikes on the biotechs with taking on that risk. He's okay. He's got it set up so he knows that, yes, he might be risking 20% on this position, but even if he's completely wrong or the stock you know, has one of those complete 80% declines, he's okay with that. He's, not, he's making sure that he's not investing too much and risking too much of his portfolio. All right, I'm just going through, and it looks like we've answered all the questions. We are about 20 minutes over, ladies and gentlemen. I don't see any questions coming through, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and just uh, end the presentation for today. I want to thank you all for joining me, and um, we'll let you all know soon about the upcoming presentations, including the uh, potential one on income methods number seven, number eight, and number nine, and. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in the future. And remember, tomorrow at RadioactiveTrading.com, you see here the upcoming live webinars tomorrow at 12 noon. Uh, Kurt's going to be doing his uh, presentation there on uh, the radioactive trading method. And of course, I'll just be there to uh, help answer questions or to go along the presentation as well. And we hope to see you tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Happy trading. Send me an email. Give me a call if you have any questions at any given time.